Welcome back. Perfect timing. The jury just getting back into the courtroom and the cross-examination resuming. George Wagner, he claims he had nothing to do with the Ohio family massacre and that it was the other members of his family. Let's go back and listen to a uh, resumption of the cross-examination. He said another firearms receipt. Okay, thank you. You tell us the date on that. It is 3-17-16. Okay. And what weapon was that? It's a Glock 17 9 millimeter. Okay. And where did you purchase it? <clears throat> Bill's Bait House. Okay. And do you remember where you got the AR from? Walmart, I believe. Quadruple L3. Um, I think this is uh, just a purchase form. I think what this is. Okay. And what is that? Uh, Beretta 92 9 millimeter. Okay. And that's a weapon you purchased? For my father, yes. From your father? For my father. For your father. So I want to, will you tell me, when did you guys move to Peterson Road? Early 2014, I believe. Okay. And you were still living at Peterson Road? In 2015 and 2016? Yes. You lived there until May of 2017 when you... I believe it was May. Yeah, when you took your first trip to Alaska, yes. right? Okay. So you know that you have to put accurate information on those forms, correct? Yes. It's a federal offense not to. When yes. you're purchasing a firearm, right? Yes. Okay. So if you could go ahead and look at it and tell us what address you put down there. It's 845 Bethel Hill Road. Okay, but that's not relived. Not at the time. My license hadn't expired, and when I bought my firearms, I was advised just to use what was on the driver's license I had, then taking the time to change it. Actually, that's not permitted. That's what I was advised by, okay. by the people I bought them from. They said to put the addresses on my license. There is a warning right up at the top indicating that you have to uh, provide accurate information or that the federal offense is believing it's been 10 years in prison for that. Correct? Right at the top of that form. It says that uh, that it's basically to determine whether you're able to own a firearm or not. attention to the top of page two. If you could read that paragraph.
And you see that it says that you understand that making any false oral or written statement or exhibiting any false or misrepresented identification with respect to this transaction is a crime punishable as a felony. Yes. Under federal law. Yes. Okay. But on at least three, at least these three forms, you did not provide accurate information, correct? As far as the driver's license and address, no. you about the arson at Bethel Hill Road of the home, the last home? Yes. Okay. You indicated that you knew it was going to happen? Yes. Okay. And that you moved your belongings out of the home? Yes. Before it was burnt. And that was right after you guys had been told that your grandmother was going to be selling the property, correct? Not directly after, no. It was, I want to say six, seven months before or six, seven months after we've been told. Okay, and how long did you have to get out? In the beginning or last or, um, I think in the beginning it was a year or two, something like that. Okay. I could be mistaken on and that. And then the last was what? It's the last few months. Okay, so the last few months you were there, you knew you had to get out? Yes. Okay, and so what was the plan? for getting out, because you guys couldn't sell the property, it didn't belong to you, right? No, the initial, my grandmother offered to let us have one of her rental properties. Okay, but you guys didn't want to do that? If we wouldn't have had anywhere else to go, that's what we were going to do. Okay. So instead, this plan becomes that you're going to burn the house down, get a good chunk of money. That was my mother's plan to burn it, yes. Okay, but you went along with it. I didn't stop them, because there was no stopping them. I just told her I wanted nothing to do with that. Okay. But then, well, actually, Jake testified that you were present inside the house when the fire was started, correct? I was not inside the house when the fire started. I was working on my truck. Okay. And you did profit from the fire, correct? If you count living on Peterson, yes. Wouldn't you count living on Peterson? Eventually, it was going to wind up being mine and my brother's. Okay. And you were able to have the money to buy that, correct? Yes. My mom and dad bought it. It's in your and your brother's name. It's in our name, but it belonged to them. It was just to skip, I think it's called inheritance taxes at the end. Okay. That way, if they passed, we didn't have to deal with that. And also because they didn't have good credit, right? Not for their part of good credit. It had nothing to do with theirs. It had the fact if me and my brother ever wanted a loan, that played into it, we could use it as collateral. It gave you good credit. It was majority to skip inheritance taxes. Okay, so trying to circumvent the system, more or less. To skip inheritance taxes, same thing that my grandmother's done by skipping my dad to leave the farm to us. Okay, so, but you, you got that house, I mean, you told us under, at the border that it's your, your brother's name, house yes. and your mom lives with you. Under legal name, the house belongs to us. Okay. The place was still technically my parents' place. Okay. And when you sold the house on Peterson, you used it to pay off all your debts, right? Yes, we paid off our debts with it. We, correct. You guys all shared the money and paid off all of your debts. We paid everybody's debts off with it, yes. Okay. And you heard Tabby testify that she helped fill out the receipts and stuff afterwards, correct? If she did, I wasn't aware of it. Okay. Were you aware that there were receipts made for the purposes of insurance? I'm aware that my mother's done it on every house. She's filled out receipts for stuff that's supposed to be in the house. Okay. And how are you aware of that? Because she's sat down for hours at tables and stuff that I'd be coming and going, writing out receipts and looking up prices and stuff. Okay. (coughs) 
and that basically gets used to increase the amount that you guys collect from insurance, right? Not really increase it. It goes on to, like, your normal insurance policy, you've got your insurance on the structure, and then you've got contents. It gets your contents check paid for because they want proof of what was in there. Okay. And you always have insurance on both? I'm pretty sure she's had insurance on both every time. Can you, it's been marked as State's Exhibit CC288R. If you could look at that and just tell me if. Do you recognize that? I don't recognize the itself. I've never seen it, but it looks like my mom's handwriting. Okay. And and what are what is the writings of? What are the writings um, of? My understanding is just different stuff that she's wrote down for receipts. Okay. So cast iron, cash register, thirty dollars. Vintage brass hurricane lamp with milk glass scope, seventy five dollars. eBay brought three years ago. Survivor hatchet. Two of these, $49.99 each, $100 total, about two years ago, flea market, right? Right, okay. stuff like that. Okay. And again, you were aware of that. You certainly didn't tell on her. What was the question? Did you ever tell on her for no. doing those things? No. And again, but for that money, you would not have been able to buy your own home, correct? And pay cash for it? No. Correct. And in fact, you said your dad, who thinks he's so smart, uh, wasn't really smart and lost 50000 of it. He did. Okay. And that you therefore had to borrow money from your grandmother? Yes. <laughs> said that the night of the homicides, you went to bed at 10 o'clock. 10 ish, if I remember correctly. It's been a long time. Okay. And you said that was your usual bedtime? Usually somewhere around there. Okay. All right. And so do you recall, again, being interviewed at the border and saying that the four of you, well, the six of you, actually, your mom, your dad, your brother, yourself, Sophia and Bullvine, were watching a movie and you were up until, you didn't go to bed until 12.30. I don't night. remember what time it was. Okay. Do you remember telling the border, at the border, the agents, when they asked you about what you did that night, you saying that your mom had fixed cheeseburgers for you and how delicious they were and she makes the best and maybe one day she could make them for them. I don't remember. 
remember that now. Okay. I'm not saying I didn't say it, I just said I don't remember. Okay. So, um, you indicated that you watched a movie, I believe a fairy movie, correct? A what? You indicated that you watched a fairy movie. I don't remember what. A movie that Sophia wanted to watch. I just, I remember watching the movie with the kids at this point. I don't remember what it was. Okay. It's been a long time. And you indicated that that is when your son would usually go to sleep as well. My son usually went to sleep between 10 and 11 usually. Okay. So from what I can remember. Is there a reason that you would lie to the people at the border? I'm not saying I did. I'm saying I don't remember what time I told them then. Okay. I mean, it may have been. I just, from my memory now, I remember going to bed around 10-ish. I could be wrong about that, but that's what I remember. Yeah, well, because now we know that Chris Sr. and Gary were being killed at 11 p.m., right? I don't know that. You don't know that? No. You don't know that that's when your dad had Chris call his phone and you saw, you saw the phone calls, correct? I'm saying I wasn't there. I don't know when my... Chris had died. Right. Okay. You know that's what Jake said. I know my brother's time is off on everything that's been showed in here. You saw the information about the phone calls from the CIU analyst that testified here, right? Some Saying at 10.55 p.m. is when those... I don't remember what time it showed on it, but some time around that. Okay. And you heard your brother say that that is short, shortly or immediately upon those phone calls being made is when Chris was shot, correct? I think that's what he said, yes. Okay. So now we know, at least according to Jake, that Chris Sr. and Gary were killed at 11 o'clock, right? I think that's what he said. Which makes your story at the border impossible, right? I Again, I don't remember exactly everything I said at the border. Well, I assume you were trying your best to tell the truth when you were interviewed at the border, correct? Yes. To, to my knowledge of what I remembered. Okay. And this was much closer to the time of the offense when you were interviewed at the border, right? A year and a half, I think. Well, it was May of 17, which is a, a year. little over a year. Just a little over a year, yeah. And now we're at six and a half years later? I think it's around six and a half, maybe a little more. Okay. So, would you agree that your memory would have been better then than it is now as far as times go? I can't say yes or no because I really don't remember what I said back then. Okay, I'm not interested as much as what you said, as much as do you agree that it would be more accurate back then? I can't agree yes or no because I just don't know. You agree that you were trying to be honest with the agents. Certainly you weren't trying to lie to them. Yes, I agree on that. You certainly weren't trying to provide a cover story for you and your brother and your father and your mother. No, right? not. So this whole idea that we're going to coordinate our response and say that we were all together on family night, movie night, watching, watching a video, um, surely you didn't just make this up when you told no. the people at the border. It just happened to be the same story that you guys had agreed in advance to tell. There was no agreement in advance. My dad came down, my kid didn't want him to leave. George Wagner on the stand being crossed. We'll get a break and get you back into the courtroom with more. Stay with us. Defendant in the Ohio family massacre trial back on the stand for a second day today. Right now, it is cross-examination. George Wagner continues to push the narrative that he isn't like the other members of his family. The defendant, uh, his mother, Angela, father Billy, and brother Jake all have been charged. But he says, wait, I'm not one of them. Right now, the cross-examination continues and the prosecutor is asking about the night of the murders. Also, because of where your bedroom's located, with the stairs, anyone leaving from the upstairs, correct? I always heard my mom and my kids come downstairs because they sound like I heard a buffalo coming down it. 
Yeah. And you indicated your dad had gone up the stairs that night with your mom to go to bed. I don't remember on that. He yeah. might have, but I don't remember. So you don't remember now. I but don't back remember. in 2017, when you were talked to with the agents at the border, when you were trying your best to be honest, right? Yes. You told them that your dad went upstairs and went to bed with your mother. It's a possibility. I don't remember saying that, but I might have. Okay. Was that true? I just, I don't remember the statement. I don't remember. I'm seeing. asking you, is it true that your dad went upstairs with your mother? At this point, I don't know because I don't remember. Okay. And then you indicated that you got up around 8.30 or 9 the next day, correct? I remember around daylight, well, I remember now, but it could be wrong. Okay. And at no point did you indicate to the agents at the border that your brother was already up and it surprised you because usually you're the first one up. They'd never asked that. Okay. Not to my knowledge. They asked you what you did. They asked you what you had for dinner. They asked me what I did that morning. I went to tear down the building. Okay. You indicated they asked you what time you got up. I don't remember that part. agree that you owned numerous SKSs, correct? Yes, more than I can put a number on. Okay. And you would agree that when the search was done at the Flying W at your grandparents' home where you were storing your guns, correct? Yes. That an SKS was not among those weapons, correct? No, it was not. Okay. And you indicated that your brother had owned an SKS as well. Yes. And you recall that he did not like the SKS, correct? I recall that's what he said. Okay. That it jammed on him? An older version SKS. Okay. Not the one that he owned at last. And where did that SKS go that you owned? Ben McCann has it. Actually, Ben McCann has the AR-15, is what you told us. He has it, too, okay. with multiple other guns that I've sold him. Okay. Well, curiously, you left that SKS out of the list of guns you owned and out of the list of the guns that you gave to Ben McCann when you were interviewed at the border. That SKS was sold long before that. Okay. In <laughs> roughly middle 2015. But you did not indicate that to the agents at the border, correct? They never asked me about an SKS. They asked you what guns you owned. And I, if my memory serves me right, around the time of the murders. And you gave a long list. Yes. Including this AR-15. Yes. And at no point did you mention the SKS. Because it was gone before that. And when Special Agent Scheider wanted to talk to you about that gun list that had the SKS under your name, did you talk to him about it? I told him to talk to my attorney, and he never asked about an SKS. He asked about a Colt 22. Okay, but he sent the gun list to you, correct? Yes, but he didn't and ask about anything. And you're clearly aware that the SKS is listed under your name, correct? At that point in time, I had no knowledge of an SKS being used in this. And he had never asked me about any SKS or anything other than that Colt 22 on that list. Mm -hmm. You certainly became aware of that once we started talking to people, correct? Oh, aware of what? 
that the SKS was of interest. I don't remember becoming aware of that until after I was arrested. Okay. Did you ever tell us that that SKS was at Ben McCann's? You've never asked. Have you ever told us that? Nobody's ever asked me, so it's a no. ever owned a 1911-22? No. Has your brother ever owned one? To my knowledge, no. So his testimony that he had this for more than a year, you were unaware of that? If he's owned it that long, I didn't know about it. Okay. Well, obviously there's a picture of him holding that weapon in 2015. Now I see that the picture's his. But back then, I didn't think but it was hit it. Okay, we're about to uh, hit the uh, top of the hour uh, break. Casey, earlier, check in with you one more time. Uh, what do you think? Is he holding up? He's trying the best he can. I mean, this is an aggressive prosecutor who is very strategic. She's showing that the devil is in the details and that he's trying to disassociate himself with his family, but his responses prove otherwise. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure he's going to be on longer than his direct examination. So, um, it's, it's starting. Yeah, it's a marathon, and uh, you can see it in the prosecutor's demeanor and manner. This is uh, uh, going to be a slog, and she's hoping to trip him up. Casey Early, thank you as always.